Good morning, fellow privateers, and welcome to the week ahead outlook and uh, weekly recap from your friends at Privateer FX. Let's get right into this thing. Make sure everything's working properly. I believe our, yep, the mic's working, good. Might have some background noise. Got a few people over here on a Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this first chart right here. Some monthly. It's the, the currency volatility index is white. It's the white line. If you can see it, it's this one right here. So we are now below the 18 and 17 lows. The next next stop is probably this 2014 low so that's a currency vol the um, we also have the move index which is the uh, the fixed income um, that one is this yellow that's making new multi it's approaching 2018 levels and if you look back 10 years it's the lowest it's been in a long time and then we have the VIX of course which is just the equity vol um, that is not yet to the 18 lows, but getting close. And you know, you can see here, like I, I can see this getting back down to some sub 10. Anyhow, for this affects everyone. This is not just the, um, not just the you know the shorter term tactical traders. It, this affects the real money guys, the hedge funds, pretty you know everyone in the market, even the corporates. Um, it's dire, but vols mean reverting. It will come back at some point, but we're in a you know in a phase right now in like a this low vol environment. You know it's going to make things very difficult for us. So anyhow. Keep the faith, it'll come back. It always does. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up in the week ahead. We have the, um, we got a lot of central bank meetings this week. Sorry, I'll tell the kids to be quiet. We've got a bunch of central banks. We've got the uh, FOMC this week on Wednesday. We've got the BOE, the Norges Bank, and the SNB on Thursday. Um, and as uh, one of our providers says, just to spice things up a little bit, the UK will have its third meaningful vote in the House of Commons. <clears throat> Sometime ahead of the March 20th uh, Article 50 trigger deadline. So. Sounds like this week to me. Uh, what else do we have? We've got uh, some treasury auctions. We've got um, some PMIs coming out late in the week. I think they're the advanced PMIs on, uh, I believe it's Friday. Aussie jobs this week. So there's definitely some event risk this week, but if you look at, you know, if you were, go back to that vol chart that I showed you, no one really gives a shit. The market, clearly the options market, does not care at all. You know, the BOJ was last week that kind of came and passed without any sort of excitement, uh, much to our chagrin, because we were positioned for a more dovish sounding um, BOJ, but we didn't get that. Just checking my notes here. Um, I was reading something from one of our providers uh, that the re reflationary seasonals start in April, so we got a couple more weeks left in March, where things like the commodity pairs, like the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, they do uh, fairly well in April. Something to keep in mind, you know, keep in mind. We talked about the central bank meetings, uh, FOMC, SNB, they're going to be dovish sounding, 
we think. We'll go into a little more detail with the FOMC. Norges Bank is expected to hike. <coughs> Uh, along these lines, the OIS pricing for Aussie cuts uh, looks like they're, the market's pricing in a cut in August. Um, we do think there's a potential for some dollar weakness, and we'll get to the charts in a minute, leading up to the FOMC meeting um, on Wednesday, and that's just a kind of more of a positioning thing. And our expectations from the Fed this week is they're going to have to shift the, the dots lower uh, possibly announcing an end of balance sheet runoff, the the end date of the balance sheet runoff. Probably lower their GDP. Goldman Sachs thinks maybe 0.2 percent, but they're expecting the dots to, to move down to reflect what the market is pricing in, which is just one hike total from in the 2019 to 2020. And that's versus December like the last meeting in December was two hikes in 2019. So, the, you know, that's that bearish tilt that we've been talking about. Um, the terminal rate is going to end at 2.5 to 2.75 versus the 3 to 3.25, which is what they were expecting in December. So we're definitely, you know, thinking that the dots are, are, are going to be lowered, um, both for how many rate hikes, in the next year and a half, um, you know, I think they have to come in line with the, what the market's pricing in, and uh, that we'll be paying close attention. That that could be a pretty important meeting, actually. Um, we're going to go to the weeklies. Um, there's been a lot of inside weeks. Like you'll just see how the reason why this volatility is approaching, you know, multi-year lows. A good way to measure that is just look at the look at a weekly chart. So here's the dollar index. See it's colored blue. Closed down here on Friday, but it was inside the previous week's bar. So the you know the big levels here are the, the kind of this 9770 and let's call it 96 20, 30. If we break either side of those, and it certainly looks like it's going down, not up. You know, we're going to go back to this kind of 95.80 level. I could see it getting all the way back down to 95, which is uh, pretty good support. So that's a dollar index. The Australian dollar, you know, we'll just go right down the road here. Uh, another, in, uh, it's an inside week. The euro, you know, this makes sense because it's a huge percentage of the dollar index. Inside week there. Um, Cable did not. Cable did not have an inside week. Actually, had an outside reversal higher week. Which, I, uh, whatever. We're not going to talk about cable. Things are pain in the ass. Um, dollar CAD pretty quiet week inside. Uh, dollar China even had a, a an inside week and closed a bit lower. You know, with the dollar. I think the dollar index was off about a half a percent or point. 0.75% or something like that this week. Dollar yen inside week, even with the BOJ. Um, Euro yen is actually kind of interesting. If you look at uh, we had an inside week here, closed um, we closed up here at 126.19. We pop over the daily chart. Seems to be some looks like maybe a new marginal high. And a, a perfect doji day, so that's on our radar. Um, a potential here's Aussie and daily. A lot of indecisiveness here. If we pop over to the weekly, you can see it's inside. Sure enough. So what we'd like to do with these inside weeks, when you know when vol's so low, um, you know we like to kind of pick a side and decide which way we want to lean. Um, this one <clears throat> looks pretty neutral to me. Um, you know, I think if we start taking out last week's lows at 7777, we're gonna, you know, there's a good chance we could take out this low. This would have to be with Aussie, and of course, it would have to be equity weakness, and um, you know, as a using that as a uh, 
proxy for risk off. <clears throat> if you look at Friday, it was very, very quiet inside day in Aussie, uh, inside day in Dollar China. Didn't do anything. Kiwi as well, inside, and we looked at the Euro yen with the doji type day. So this, this bar here was Friday, this little, yeah, you can see it here. I'd be leaning on the left side here, thinking that maybe we can trade a bit lower. Um, you know, the market is just completely listless. Nothing's moved more than 0.1% here from Friday's close, as far as I can see. Um, again, it's this, you know, the first charts that I showed you were these all charts. Um, so we're going to keep this one short and sweet, I think, today. Um, again, the the focus will be on these central bank meetings this week, and uh, I guess the risk would be we're thinking that the dollar can come off into Wednesday's FOMC meeting when Paul will be speaking and holding a news news conference. Um, but we do think that they'll. I guess the risk is if they sound slightly more hawkish than the way the market is pricing. Um, let's take a look at the stocks real quick and then we'll we'll wrap it up for the week. Um, oh, I just hit that for some reason. We took out, we're taking out these highs and you can see these are all important highs right there. You know, all these little carrots on top are all these fractals. Um, so this is a daily, it's, you know, it's kind of breaking out. And we had that inside day on Thursday. We took out Thursday's highs, closed up here. Um, <clears throat> if we pop over to the weeklies, this to me looks like, here's this, uh, this dashed horizontal. It looks like we might go to 2890. And I, it's, it's risk on, and we've been fighting it, and it's not working. Um, I think we can go up to 2790. Uh, NASDAQ looks like you can probably get back to this old high, which is 20, uh, 7455. You know, that's 20 points. Oh, sorry, it's 110 points higher. Um, let's draw a line here. That's the same line as, same horizontal as, uh, as the S&P. And that was that October swoon into your end. Nikkei, inside week. Uh, inside week. And again, going back to the inside weeks, days, hours, 240s, whatever you want to look at. Generally, you, you get this inside bar and then you want to play the previous bar. So in this case, for the Nikkei, um, you know, we'd be selling it through this low, which is 20 thousand six eighty or we'd be looking to be, get long above twenty one thousand eight sixty five so I like to just draw these horizontals you know it doesn't matter the time frame um, but there's that draw another one down here and then I just set alerts and when the and when the alerts because I'm not watching these things you know intraday so much um, I'd say, you know, break either side of last week, uh, two weeks ago's range could be interesting. And, you know, again, volatility is in the shitter. So gold, nothing much, you know, came off that high, still looking okay. We, we do, we are starting to think that the dollar might come under a little bit of pressure. There's silver lower on the week. Um, here's a VEX, big golfing week not a bearish engulfing but you know engulf this entire body of the previous week's candle you know there's no reason this can't go all the way back down to these august lows which are you know 10 ish you can see a fractal down here and you see how this whole period from like may i feel like we're getting this like may to um really october before we had that stock sell off it's just a very sideways um, 
market. Let's, uh, let's see if I can draw something here. You know, like, look at this box here. And then, of course, this week we finally broke out. Um, but we are getting back into the box. And I'm, I'm kind of done fading um, fading this equity strength. So I think it's got another you know, 40, 50 points in it to the top side. So anyhow, um, that's kind of it. You know, when you have a, all tilt -y, a multi year lows and... I just feel like, you know, I think I'll get some good updates from our from our team this week ahead of the events. But as far as the, the week ahead outlook, I'm not, I'm not overly excited. I hope I'm wrong because, you know, we thrive on uh, upticks in volatility. And, you know, we are long overdue for some real moves and some trends. And, you, you know, I think it co really does come down to... Um, it comes down to the fact that when you have volatility this low across all asset classes and you're waiting on the Brexit bullshit, which is, you know, multiple votes a week, we're approaching this deadline with Europe um, at the end of this month, which is only a couple weeks away. And then you read the Bloomberg headline about the, the Trump G meeting is now going to be pushed out till June. It's all just kicking the can, and it makes it. This is the. And I think I tweeted this last week. The market is completely paralyzed by Brexit and trade talks. Until we can resolve these two, you know, main macro uh, macro events, no one in their right mind would be investing, and that matter that you know that that goes across the board that could be fixed income views fx certainly is affected by this and you know equities to a certain extent um so it, you know it's one of these periods where you just kind of sit and wait and watch and eventually the market will get short enough volatility across all the asset classes and then they will panic um purely because they're expecting no movement. And vols mean reverting, so it'll come back. So stay strong, be patient, keep your powder dry, and you'll hear from us on the European Open. Good luck trading this week, and we'll speak to you if we need to during the, uh, during the week. See what these central banks come, up, come back with. All right, all the best. Good luck. Cheers.